Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I'm actually joined by two members of our Tested special teams, effects artist Frank Ippolito, and our production designer and set designer, Danica Johnson. Now the three of us actually shot this really fun video in which we tested the new GoPro Hero Plus with Wi-Fi. Seriously, you gotta check that video out. But to make that video, there's a lot of behind the scenes work, and so today we're gonna show you how we put it all together, starting with this Nerf Rival Blaster. Let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is figure out a way to test these GoPros in a really cool way. So the idea I came up with is mounting them on these Nerf Rival Blasters, which we've tested before on the site. Now, the GoPro Hero Plus Wi-Fi is a little different from the Hero 3 and the Hero 4 high-end models we've used to. First of all, it's fixed in its waterproof casing. You can't actually take it out. Now, to mount this on the Nerf Blaster, uh, we could have used some double-sided tape or just glued it on um, or screwed it on, but to get that really cool motion in the video, we actually fix the GoPro on a three-axis stabilized gimbal. This is the Feutech wearable gimbal, uh, which houses a GoPro, and you can actually put a GoPro Hero 3 or 4 in here, but to get the GoPro Hero Plus on here, it doesn't actually fit perfectly. We use good old zip ties. And I think we'll use zip ties as well to put this whole thing onto the blaster. Let's try it out. But as simple as a zip tie. I'm really impressed. Uh, the gimbal holds it steady and we're in this follow mode where if we move the gimbal or the blaster, the GoPro is gonna follow it. Even if it tilts up and down, there's good enough clearance and it's strong enough to hold the, the heavier Hero Plus. This is the tricky part. Not that either. All right, let's get, take this for a spin, power it up, put the gimbal in follow mode. Look at that. Zip ties, magical things. No permanent alterations. You can stabilize it with some sticky tape, double-sided tape, but now we have a GoPro that follows the movements of this blaster. Perfect. Now let's take a look at that set design. All right, so Danica, you were in charge of creating the set design and producing the targets for each of these three environments. We wanted to test the GoPro in like an indoor well-lit environment, a darker low-light environment, and then an outdoor kind of big open space environment. Uh, how did you go about designing these targets for each of them? Well, the most important thing is we wanted the targets in each section to be different from each other. We decided to go for a very simple bullseye, so uh, by tracing uh, three different sizes, we just made these out of uh, foam core. Oh, lightweight, they read on screen, and their balls knock them over, no problem. Mm -hmm. And then for that next environment, that big sound stage, uh, really cool space actually. It's part of Return of the Jedi. It was actually shot in that very room. Really big space. How do we want to make the enemies visible there? Uh, well, very inspired by Men in Black. Ah, right. The training sequence where he goes through and the monsters pop up. Uh, so basically, on black foam core, we went for some public domain monsters that we uh, updated in Photoshop, changed the faces just a little bit. Um, so these will be cut out and then adorned with some level of uh, fluorescent uh, black light paint. So they will pop under that, that darker environment. Now is this just freehand drawing this? How did you get from the printer to this? No, uh, you print it out uh, after Photoshopping the uh, end image that you want, and then I use an opaque projector to project it on the wall and then trace around. Very cool, and very cool creatures. And then that third environment, moving outdoors, uh, we needed to create obstacles because we have these defenders hiding. Yeah, so basically we just needed to obstruct vision 
so people could be hiding around. So kind of in the style of the box fort, we just have a lot of boxes in a configuration that allowed for surprise attack. Awesome. Three different environments, three different types of targets, and create a really interesting space for this video shoot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. And to have a little bit more fun with this test, Frank Ippolito, we had you actually make some cool space armor. Yeah, this is awesome. I've been d building so much armor in my shop lately, and I finally got to just kind of relax and freestyle. Awesome. So uh, to design this armor, we wanted you to do three pieces, one for mm -hmm. you, one for me, one for Danica for these trial runs. And you just sketch something out. Yeah, I just uh, pulled up a couple of things on um, on Pinterest, like robots and stuff like that, and just started doodling around. And I came up with a sort of, I don't know, sort of design, and then I just kind of sort of followed it. Because <laughs> there was no like rules, I just sort of made it up as I went. Yeah, it's, it's part of the creative process. I like the the, the big like, the neck hole here, because it looks like it's supposed to have a helmet that mm -hmm. fits over, so that's very like Space Marine. I like the angular lines here, which makes it look like medieval armor, so it's like... My favorite part is our mission patches. Oh, yeah, so let's talk about the mission patches. Uh, we uh, we all designed a mission patch together, so this, this is our, the tested one, and then we made the uh, tested special teams patch. Something fun. Um, and I did these in water slide transfers. Oh, okay. So it's actually applied there, glued on. Very yeah. nice. Uh, and then talk about the fabrication process. From your sketches, how did you turn that drawing into this 3D object? Well, there's a whole bunch of tutorials out there. Like Evil Ted has a YouTube channel and Bill Doran has a book, um, some eBooks and stuff like that. And it explains this whole process of patterning and cutting and gluing and all that stuff. So it's, it's pretty standard. Just draw something out on the mannequin, cut a piece out of foam. So you had a mannequin, together. you know, yeah. putting putting foam, relatively thin foam that looks good. Yeah. This is kind of like that most of this are um, our Home Depot mats or um, or Harbor Freight mats. Mats, yeah. just like floor mats, floor mats, yeah. yoga mats. Something almost, almost looks like a carbon fiber texture to it. Yep, almost all of these are that. And then putting against the uh, the mannequin, cutting out the shapes. Uh, what are some of the things you want to call out? Because, for example, you have like a vent design here, to, and structural. I mean, none of this. It's it's all aesthetic. Right? Yeah, yeah. Everything. I mean, it's just all made up as I went. Like there yeah. was, I just thought the shape was kind of neat, and it was. Let's I just had. I just tried to have fun. I like this. It looks like there's some power source yeah, back like air, here. Air canister. Or something. Put some hoses on it. Hoses on the side. Propping it up actually reminds me of like Mass Effect. A little bit like Garrus's armor in Mass yeah, Effect. Yeah, I guess a little bit. Very cool. And then the painting process. Yeah. All right, to make them red, green, and blue, what did you do? Um, well, first thing I did was uh, I primer them all, uh, just primer them black. Mm -hmm. um, that that changes, that gets the differentiation in color of the different mats, just all one uh, cohesive thing. And then I sprayed it all uh, metal, like gray, silvery metal. Okay. Um, and then I put toothpaste on it. Toothpaste. And I took toothpaste and just kind of put it on edges, and then once the tooth once the toothpaste was on there, then I sprayed it its color. And then because the toothpaste is water soluble, all I do is take a little bit of water, wash that toothpaste off, and that gives this chipped away, worn look. So the silver metal underneath, and then the like chipped off paint that's on top. So it's like masking. You're masking yeah. it as opposed to putting tape on it. It's like a putty because you're building. And then I assume you also painted more of the silver on top. Uh, a little bit here and there. This one has more of the painted silver on it than this one. But if you look at like this shoulder, this this shoulder is painted mm -hmm. compared to this shoulder, which is mostly masked. Oh. Um, and and you both can, are ways to simulate wearing. Yeah, and some people use latex. Some people there's all kinds of different things you can use to do the same technique. But toothpaste is just kind of the easiest. Yeah, it doesn't affect that silver paint either. No, I it haven't. I mean, locks out the top yeah. coat. Um, and it looks great. I mean, it looks like this is this, these armor have seen battle. Yeah, again, you know, it was fun. It was just, it was fine to just, it was nice to finally be able to just do something for fun. Mm -hmm. And lightweight, makes the video so identifiable. Yeah. Each of us having a lot of fun. And then off we went to 3210 Studios, our location, for that fun video shoot. So thank you, Frank. And thank you, Danica, for doing the set design, our location. I hope you guys enjoyed this little behind the scenes video for our GoPro Hero Plus Wi-Fi test. Check out that video if you haven't seen it. We had a ton of fun that day. And please subscribe to our channel, Tested.com on YouTube. And we'll see you guys online. See you guys on Tested.com. See you next time.